Anthony Cordesman, a noted national security analyst, is the Arleigh Burke Chair in Strategy at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, and he joins us from Washington. Anthony, describe to us the difficulties that Israelis would face in launching an airstrike against Iran. In many ways, the most serious difficulty is knowing how many targets there are and exactly how to strike them, because it's not only a matter of locating them. Many of them are in complexes with a large number of buildings. Some are underground. You don't know exactly where the critical facility or critical equipment is, even if you know that this may be an active site. But beyond that, Israel does not have bombers. It doesn't have stealth aircraft like the United States. It doesn't have long-range cruise missiles. It has to use fighters, and its fighters are very, very capable. But they need multiple refueling to get to the targets in Iran from Israel. And they have to fly very demanding profiles to get through Arab territory with a minimum risk of being intercepted by fighters or missiles. They have to fly beyond their normal range and come back having penetrated Iranian air defenses. So can Israel do this with a limited number of strikes? Yes. Can it do it in the numbers required? Probably not. Well, if Israel does attack Iran, what is the likely outcome? Could the Israelis permanently cripple Iran's nuclear program? Not at this point. It's not even clear we could unless we kept re-striking again and again every time we saw a new indicator. Iran is simply too developed. It has all the ability components it needs to produce nuclear weapons. It has many nuclear facilities. It has been able to create a centrifuge production capability, which means, as we saw just last week, it can create new small facilities and hide them, put the centrifuges there rather than a central facility. Israel might be able to hit the hardened site, which is the main site in Iran that has up to 57,000 centrifuges as capacity. But it could not be certain that it would ever hit anything like the ability to produce more centrifuges or find all of the facilities they're hidden in. Some recent reports indicate that the Israelis may be pushing back their deadlines for military action. Is that your assessment as well? I don't think Israel has ever set deadlines. It has constantly talked about this risk, and for very real reasons. One nuclear weapon could do devastating damage to a small state like Israel. But much of this is political. It is intended to send a signal to Iran that if it does not comply with the United Nations, if it does not negotiate and reduce the profile of its activities, Israel might strike, that it will be a constant threat. So we need to be very careful not to assume that just because Israel's leaders keep warning Iran, that means they're ready to go to war. We only have a few seconds left, but do you think that Israel actually will carry out an attack if these negotiations don't succeed? I think it is a serious risk, but I think they understand the limits on their capabilities and that they might simply provoke a worse Iranian response over time, even if they got limited short-term gains. Anthony Cordesman, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you.